So I wanted to do a teardown on this airbag module. I had a few of these because I was troubleshooting a problem on my uh, O2 Volvo S60. And basically I was trying to find one that was compatible to figure out if there was an issue with the module uh, or some data saved on it. Anyway, so I have this spare one and I thought it would be interesting to tear down um, this thing to see how it's built because obviously this should be some sort of really high reliability. This is what's mounted to the vehicle to detect uh, a crash and everything like that. Um, so all we have on the back is there's a bunch of Torx bolts so we can remove them. So if we take a look right away, um, what we'll find is actually, you might expect to be able to take this board out but we have to do a little more work before we can do that. Um, so some devices down there. This right here, so you can see all of these um, lines, that's the connector on the other side, is the, to the CAN bus, and also um, it connects directly to the various airbag modules. So that's this, this connector right here, so that uh, will fire them, as well as talking back to the computer. Now, to take this apart any further, there's um, there's something that's actually glued to the, probably won't be able to see, but in there, um, in the back, there's some sort of thing, and it's what these plastic tabs have on them, and it's glued to the, the case itself. So, to go any further, I'll take this bolt out, um, I'm actually going to have to desolder them, so we'll take that out. Um, and you'll see the board still won't come up. Um, so I came prepared for this with a Hacko desoldering gun. Um, so this will let me hopefully just remove the the offending parts, whatever they are, which I suspect may be related to the actual sensing of the the crash situation. So I don't know how they're doing it. Make sure that's on. Yeah, the gun's working. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it just took a little bit. So we can see it hasn't quite cleared out um, all the holes yet. So I probably need actually a, seems like I need a wider bit for this, which I don't have, but I think this will probably be able to do enough. Okay, so that cleared a little deeper in the uh, those holes. Um, anyway, so now all we're gonna do is try to pry this guy up and see what happens. So you can see the board twisting again. We don't... <laughs> I don't care about this guy too much. If you were still planning on repairing this, you'd probably want to do a better job. Um, ooh, yeah, that's got some good flex. So what else? Is something else stuck here? Come on. So I don't know if those pins unsoldered enough? Or there's something else holding it in? Come on. So it seems like those are definitely glued a bit too. There we go. Whew, this is really stuck in there. Okay, we see the solder joints popped anyway. Um, so hopefully, now pull this board up and see what's on the other side. Da -da -da. All right, so here's what we got. Um, so this is what the, the inside of the SRS module itself looks like. Uh, so basically we have two big 
things here um, and then the actual control board itself. So let's take a look first at this. Um, what do we got here? Okay, so these are not, I was wrong in fact. I thought these might be some sort of sensor, but they're in fact just big ass capacitors. Um, so you can see on the side there, 6,800 microfarads. Um, and this makes sense, 50 volts. If you, when you were blowing the, um, when you're blowing the airbags, you obviously want to have a lot of current behind those to go right away. So these are uh, just what looks like big electrolytic capacitors. Uh, I imagine they're extremely high specification. So well beyond, you know, the typical crap you have in your motherboard that's leaking. I don't know if we were able to get sort of glued with uh, looks like RTV type stuff. Anyway, I'll try to get that out later. Uh, in the meantime, let's look at what the control board for your uh, control board for your airbags does, and what do they have for high reliability. Um, so if we zoom in here a bit, see if you can read these part numbers. So nothing too recognizable. Um, We'd have to look online to see what all these guys are, if we can find anything. Hmm. All right, so I did a little more looking. The um, What we have is basically the main micro here. You can see don't know if let's see if you're able to see this part number um, anyway it's something like CR 16 MCS 9V so you can look that up it's a um, microcontroller it has a CAN interface basically what you'd expect um, and you can see obviously it's got the oscillator hanging off it so that's sort of part how, how you know but um also, it's almost the only part that doesn't have some sort of custom part number. Um, and the rest of them are all actually Bosch branded parts of some sort. Uh, so as a hint, this board, it turns out, you can have see a little logo down there, um, I guess is just some sort of, you know, generic knot specifically designed by Volvo. Um, so there must be a lot of cars, whether they use this specific board exactly, but um, but using this type of, of device. So what you see is, for example, here we have this row of whatever they are, Bosch something or other, but this 30375 part number. Um, if we look on the top side, there's these two PLCC devices here. Um, and if I get the light just right, you can probably see Bosch, that same symbol, and then 30376. Um, when you Google this, you can see it's used in a whole ton of other airbag modules from different manufacturers. So I don't know exactly what they are. Um, I know basically the, the device, so some of this might be analog. For example, it can detect if a... Um, not only if an airbag is open, but if it doesn't have sort of the expected uh, load characteristic. So some sort of impedance-like measurement, I believe it's able to do on the other end of the airbag. Um, so we have, you know, there's there's two big capacitors hanging off here and here. Um, and interestingly, so the, the negative sort of goes to the, the plane. And let's just zoom in much as we can. Um, the positive side, you can see it has this larger trace here, um, goes through to via here, and same with this guy, positive trace goes through to via here. Um, and the other side of them is actually going into this chip, so I don't know if that's part of the monitoring. I don't know if these are FETs or something like that in a PLCC package. Um, interestingly, you know, what I would have expected is a bunch of big FETs somewhere for firing individual airbags, uh, but that doesn't seem to exist. So there's what I think is just a regulator at the top here um, or something like that, but that's about all you have. So there's two other same thing. These are just Bosch uh, part number chips here. 
Um, there's the Bosch part number trips in the bottom, as I mentioned. So at this point, it's pretty hard to guess um, what all of them do without reverse engineering it further. But the sort of the interesting thing is that there's the, the main micro here um, is connected over CAN, so that's sort of orchestrating everything. Uh, we have the two big caps hanging off it. Um, if you remember, they were the, you know, the, these guys in the bottom here. Um, and they presumably are just power for the, um, for the device when it's actually firing airbags. And yeah, but that's sort of the rest of the board. Um, not a whole lot to it really of interest, but thought it might be interesting to see what the heck, uh, the inside of a airbag module looks like and what sort of parts they're using. So because it seems to be a lot of custom stuff, it's not too um, not too interesting that we can do, but well, that's funny. Look at this oscillator. I just noticed that. It's like a half size or something. Uh, so it's not normally they're a little lower uh, when they're this, this smaller package. Um, that's weird. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching.